See, every day around my way is just like any other day The way I move love, yesterday's the way I move today It shows me the way to walk the narrow path And yeah, the jealous laugh, but um, we moving through the battle fast So can I get that rim shot? Hey, hey, hey It's all about the song you sing and what you say, say. This lyricist is gone with the one I keep the hope When all of this is gone in the end, right? And ever since the music got me open eyed Knowing that my true colors were showing flowing unbelievable These lyrics they passing through my blood And if you know the world needs more love Then pump your fish like this, this, this Yeah And let your problems flow by And understand We gotta make the most, right? Up close I realize it's more to life than meets the eye These cars and clothes we idolize They never could reach the sky You looking down on others cause of what you got, why? What you gonna do when on those things you can't rely? I can't deny I need love in my life to survive Before you criticize, hey, you gotta walk the fine line Shine bright like strobe lights with the, the real hip hop Holding it tight, tight Shine bright like strobe lights with the, the real hip hop Holding it tight, tight, tight It's a word of day, a word of day, a word of day Hey, what's up everybody? It's a word of day And that was a verse that I wrote when I was, I was 21. So I wrote that verse when I was a part of my group called Critically Acclaimed. And that was, I'm telling my age, 16 years ago. About to be 17 years ago. In a few days, April 28th, I'm proud. <laughs> So what made me do that? Because the word of the day today is alliteration. And as I was going through thinking about synonyms for rhyme, came across alliteration. I was like, man, I remember that word when I was in elementary school, but I have no damn idea what the hell that word. <laughs> Y'all know how that is sometimes. It's like you learn, you learn certain things at elementary school, but then the older you get, it's like you cannot remember shit. <laughs> so I just posted to the chat uh, one place where I just uh, where I recited that verse or where I did that verse, and that was when my group Fruition did uh, Light City a couple years ago. And so I laid down that verse, made the track and everything, um, and made a commercial out of it for our Light City performance. So if you get a chance, click on that link in the description. I mean, not in the description, in the comment section, is a YouTube link. Let me know what you think. So we're talking about alliteration. Here we go. What is alliteration? I wonder if you remember. I kind of felt ashamed that I didn't, but that's why we're here for a word of day. <laughs> the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words. The alliteration of sweet birds sang. That was a, a sentence. Now, most of us remember this. This is the easy one to remember, right? <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can do this. I'm gonna see if I can get this to uh, to the beat. Let me see. Let's see if I get messed up by this. Oh shit, this is cool. All right, here we go. So. How to identify alliteration. We're about to have some fun with this for the next next five minutes. Here we go. First one. One, two, three. Here we go. Becky's beagle barked and bayed, becoming bothersome for Billy. <laughs> Number two. Can you keep the cat from clawing the couch? It's creating chaos. And I messed up on couch. I couldn't even get it out. Dan's dog dove deep in dam, drinking dirty water as he dove. I'm gonna actually put this in the uh, chat. This will be fun. We should we should uh, have fun saying these, and I might do a live stream like that. Just invite people in on my IG, and the goal is literally gonna be to see how fast and how accurately you can alliterate. <laughs> Here's another one. Fred's friends fried Fritos for Friday's food. <laughs> Greedy goats gobbled up gooseberries getting good at grabbing the goodies. <laughs> Hannah's home has heat now, hopefully. 
I, I sure as hell hope it does. <laughs> Jackrabbits jump and jiggle jauntingly. Kim, Kim's kid kept kicking like crazy. <laughs> Coincidentally. Larry's lizards, ah, Larry's lizard likes lounging in the sun. That was easy because in the sun didn't catch me. Mike made mellow music with his new microphone. Nick's nephew needed some new notebooks. Peter's piglet pranced prickishly. Quincy's quilters quit quilt, quilting quickly. That's, that's crazy as hell. I'm going to try that again. Quincy's quilters quit quilting quickly. <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Ah. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer rapidly. Damn, I can't get this word of nothing. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer rose rapidly into the air. Seven sisters slept soundly on the sand. Tim took tons of tools to make toys for the tots. Vivian is very vixen-like and vexing. While walking warily home, I wonder where Wally was. Jarvis yanked his ankle at yoga and Yolanda yelled out in surprise. Zachary zeroed in on zoo keeping as a career. <laughs> and of course, Peter Piper picked the peck of pickle peckers. If, let me see if I can find that one. Let me see how fast I can do that one, right? Peter Piper. Here we go. Got to look it up, so give me a sec. I'll be right back, but what the heck? If you didn't know yet, I just flow and freestyling from 97 to now, yo. Used to do it like it was nothing. Used to do it like it was fluent. Used to do it like I was bluffing. Now I do it as if it is congruent, because it is. It's parallel and all of this, kid. Okay, let me go back. Here we go. Peter Pipe. Here we go. <laughs> Peter Piper Pick. And of course, y'all know the other one with Shelly. That's the I think that's probably the hardest one for me. Shelly selling seashells on the seashore. I'm gonna try that one too. Alright, what's the Peter Piper saying? <laughs> that's a Google question. What is the Peter Peter Piper saying? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peckers. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. I never heard that last part. I thought it was how many, how many pickled peppers. The last sentence in this is, where's the peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked? See, so I, I technically got it. I technically got it. <laughs> no, I didn't, but I technically got it. It's just that they screwed me up because at the end I didn't know it was gonna end that way. Alright, let's see, let's find the other ones. And of course, we know these as tongue twisters, but what ties the tongue twisters together is alliteration. And that's the part that I forgot. So I need to go back to second grade. The history behind eight famous tongue twisters. Tuck tw tongue twisters have been screwing up people's speaking abilities around the world for centuries. As entertaining as tripping over tricky terms can be, and English, early English twisters were also used to teach pupils proper speech. Hey Jessica, thanks for hanging out. Jessica, how fast can you say Peter Piper pick a peck of pickle peckers? Or whatever I was just trying to say. I'm gonna do an IG live and I'm gonna invite people in to say tongue twisters with alliteration as fast as you can and I'm gonna do a cash app or some kind of PayPal reward for the person that does it the fastest It'll probably be five dollars <laughs> all right so okay this was here we go so it was Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peckers a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked if Peter Piper picked the peck of pickled peppers where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked I never heard the where's the hell what the hell where is how many why did I grow up on how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick if that wasn't the Peter Piper peckles that I was supposed to pick when I was saying that shit <laughs> Peter and his famous pickled peppers first appeared in print in 1813 in John Harris's 
Peter Piper's practical principles of plain and perfect pronunciation. Now, come on, Jessica, you can't type it. That's not, you know, you got time. You had time to sit there and type it. (laughs) So I didn't know that. It first appeared in print. Peter Piper first appeared in print in 1813. And John Harris's Peter Piper, uh, Peter Piper, uh, Peter Piper's practical principles of plain and perfect pronunciation. I'm going to need new lips after this. Like, God damn. But as is the case with many classic tongue twisters, the rhyme itself may have already been in common use by that time. Several spice enthusiasts have also suggested that the Peter in question was based on 18th century French horticulturist Pierre Pavier. Like, it's just alliteration all over the place. Like his name is even two Ps. Pierre Pavier. <laughs> Oh, Pavre. I'm saying that wrong. I say Pavier, but it's Pavre. Pavre. Though that connection should probably be taken with a grain of salt or pepper in this case. Like, God damn it. Okay, this is this is out of control right now. All right. Much like Mary Anning and her rumored seashore seashells. More on this later. Pavre ties to the poem while feasible aren't necessarily rooted in concrete evidence. Okay. Okay, Poivre is French for pepper. <laughs> Piper was both Latin for pepper and a typical British last name. Last name, And the man was known for smuggling cloves from the Spice Islands in his day. So the supposed link makes sense. As a renowned gardener, Poivre, I'm probably pronouncing his name way wrong, may very well have pickled peppers with those stolen cloves, but we don't actually know for sure. This is confusing as hell. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? While it predates her, vaudeville performer Faye Templeton is credited with putting the woodchucking woodchuck on the map. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood was the chorus of a number Templeton sang in 1903 in a Broadway musical, The Runaways, not to be confused with the musical Runaways. So of course I'm gonna I'm go ahead through. Let me see. Let me see how far this goes. All right, I think I can get through this. I'm gonna keep it going, y'all. Might as well. <laughs> okay, Robert. Let's see. Where are we? Okay, Robert Davis and Theodore Morris wrote Templeton's Woodchuck song a few later, a few years later. Uh, Ragtime. Bob Roberts covered it in his 1904 record. More recently, scholars have focused less on the origin of the phrase and more on the answer to the question. <laughs> in 1988, a fish and a wildlife technician for the New, for the New York Department of Environmental Conservation made national headlines when the <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, yo, this this is out of control. Cause I'm reading this and, and the reason why I'm hesitating. It's because it said in 1988, a fish and a wildlife technician for the New York Department, uh, they made headlines, right? Or made headlines. And it says when he posted. And my brain is going like, are they talking about the fish posting? it? Okay. When he posited, I'm sorry, if a woodchuck could chuck wood because they actually can't. Did you know that? A woodchuck actually can't chuck wood. It would be able to chuck about 700 pounds of this stuff but the little detail must not have fit into the linguistic flow of the original rhyme here's the next one now some of these i've never heard before so y'all gonna have to bear with me because i've never said these before and it's out of control right now three and four betty botter and two tutors never heard either one of these so here we go Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better, a bit of better butter will make my batter better. Then she bought a bit of butter. Batter, oh my God. Better than the bitter butter made her bitter batter better. So twas Betty Oh man, so twas 
better Betty Butter. Bought a bit of a bit of better butter. Yeah, this is crazy. My damn cheeks hurt from that. My lips and cheeks hurt from that. I'm not even gonna try it again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a series and we're gonna come back and do this together. Okay, and this is the next one. A tutor who tutored the flute tried to teach two young tutors the toot. Said the two to the tutor, it's is it harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Both these classic twisters can be traced to a poet and novelist, Carolyn Wells, writing in the 1980s. Okay, so this is what I figured out. I'm not going to be able to read the history on all these. I'm going to have to come back and I'm going to break this up into segments. But what I am going to do for these last couple minutes is I'm going to actually try the rest of these. There's only three more, so let's rock. Here we go. Ah. Me loosen up the shoulders. Gotta loosen up the shoulders. I need to stand up and be doing some jogging and stuff. Here we go. This is Shelly. She sells seashells on the seashore. The seashells see. <laughs> All right, back to the top. Here we go. She sells seashell. Oh my God. One more again. I got it this time. She sells seashells on the seashore the shells she sells are seashells i'm sure and if she sells seashells on the seashore then i'm sure she sells she <laughs> she oh my god seashore shells was the last thing i was supposed to say god damn it's crazy what this does to the mind i could not get it out for nothing <laughs> and again i'm going to tell the story of that later i'm going to do a whole series Oh, this one is easy. I scream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. Tongues didn't particularly get twisted with this one, but they did get cold, they said. <laughs> oh, and this one's easy. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. That's easy. We know that. That's not even, that's, you know. I never heard this one. Had kid poured curd pulled cod. I don't understand that. Had kid poured curd pulled cod. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Okay, and last last one I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually do a couple more that's just on a general list. And this is from 71 best tongue twisters to perfect your English pronunciation and we're out of here. Thank y'all so much for hanging with me as long as you did because you're crazy. You're crazy as hell. Alright, here we go. I'm, a, I'm literally going to click on, like I can't even talk anymore. I'm literally going to click on they have a couple different categories. I'm going to post this in this uh, under this video as well. So look for that. 71 of the hardest. I'm literally clicking on the hardest tongue twisters. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a... I can't even... I don't even know what this word says. Pest... Pest... Pestilential prison. I never heard that. Pestilential. So I get a pass on that because I never heard that word. In a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block to sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a, I can't say this word, in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock awaiting the sensation of a short sharp shock from a cheap and chipper a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block a dull dark dock a lifelong lock a short sharp shock a big black block to sit in solemn silence in a pestilential prison 
and awaiting the sensation from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big flat block. <laughs> Here's the next one. If you must crisscross a course cross cow across a crowded cow crossing, cross the cross course cow across the crowded cow crossing carefully. Okay, I did well on that one. I did very well on that. All right, here we go. Six more, I'm just gonna run straight through them. <laughs> Brisk, brave, I don't know this word. B-R-I-G-A-D-I-E-R-S, I never heard that word before. Brigadgers, so brisk, brave, brigadgers, brandish, broad, bright blades. Blunder, <laughs> blunderbusses and bludgeons, balancing them badly. That's interesting. Here's the next one. Oh, this one be hard. Six, six, oh my God, this one is hard. <laughs> this one is real hard. Six, six, hicks, nicks. Oh my God, this is crazy hard. I'm gonna do this slow. Let me just do it real slow. So we have six, sick, hicks, nick, six, slick, bricks, with picks and sticks. That's hard as shit. <laughs> Next one, last four. <laughs> I was ready to go, and I, it was like the like you're jumping rope, and you're like, all right, I'm ready, and you're like, no, nah, I'm not ready. Here we go. Here we go. Can you can a can can into an uncan can like a canner can can a can can into an uncan can? I don't know. Hey Marie, can you do these? These are hard as hell. Imagine an imaginary menagerie manager managing an, Im an imaginary menagerie. I never heard that. M menagerie. I don't even know how you pronounce that. How do you pronounce M-E-N-A-G-I-R-I? -I, I mean, G-E-R-I-E, -E, I have no idea. Last two. Rory the warrior and Roger the warrior were reared wrongly in a rural brewery. <laughs> That's crazy as hell. And the last one is Centos to 10 tenths stout states 10 tall tents. I got that shit. I got that one. Whoo! And now I'm getting ready to go and buy me a new tongue from Walmart because I have no more tongue after these tongue twisters. But I'm glad that you joined me for this one. And maybe you'll join me for the next one. My mind is out of control and you love it. And I'm above it because now I'm over this shit. I tried, I failed, I succeeded at times and ultimately I was successful. And now I'm about to go be restful. <laughs> so I'm out of here, y'all. It's a word of day, a word of day, a word of day. Join me tomorrow for the same damn thing. Peace. <laughs>